This is MPIR Live, Episode 4 for August the 19th, 2020. And my name is Clyde J.K.L. You're listening to the Mystery Play Internet Radio Live Show. And I hope that scary music intro got you in the mood and sending some chills down your spine because we got some outstanding scary old time radio for you from two episodes from my favorite series lights out lights out an American radio series devoted to horror and the supernatural created by Willis Cooper and eventually taken over by Arch Obler. The series aired from January 1934 to the summer of 1947 lights out was a was a horror series was the earliest radio horror series that predated the very popular suspense and inner sanctum series and radio historians have said that when lights out first aired in the 30s it really scared the listening populace people were calling the police people were panicking there were stories of uh, some folks that almost had heart attacks because the shows were just too scary for them. So the two episodes I picked for you tonight are my all-time favorite. The first one is it titled, it has actually has three titles because Lights Out aired on three or four different networks and they gave it a different title. It's titled, It Happened, Them Bones, or Her Name Was Jean. It aired May the 11th, 1938. So now, here on Mystery Play Internet Radio Live Show, the MPIR Live, Episode 4 for August the 19th, 2020, Lights Out. Lights out, everybody. Young lady, for 20 years you've been a pain in the neck. Jean Taylor, a pain in the neck, that's what you are. Here we have the Mona Lisa. She's got a pan like a hunk of cheese. Culture girls, culture, culture. Jean Taylor, you make me sick. Jean Taylor, how could Oh, don't pop up like that. You'll blow something. Cable, a cable to your father. Go ahead, table him, send for him. Who cares? 
What good's Paris if I don't get any fun out of it? You, you dried up prune. Uh, I've never been talked to like this in all my life. No, that's what you are, a prune. A little dried up prune. The other girls... The other girls make me as sick as you make me sick. Fun. Fun's what I want. And neither you nor my father nor anybody else is going to stop me from having it. No, I understand how you broke your mother's heart. Oh, cut it out. That tune's made me sing in the choir long enough. I'm sick of it. Money's for fun and life's for fun. I'm young. My father's got plenty of what it takes. So starting right now, the devil with sculptures and paintings and all your culture. <laughs> this is Paris. Paris. And I'm going to have fun. 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 And I'm starting right now. Jean, come back here. Jean. Jean, come back here. <laughs> Chasing after me. Never catch up with me. Dried old prune. Fun. Fun. Paris full of fun. Free now. Yeah, I'm free now. Until she cables father. Get all the fun I can while I'm free. Nobody knows me here. Get away with anything. Anything. Old prune face. Lost in the crowd. All this is swell being alone. Man looking at me. Oh, I can only talk French. Fun. I gotta hear fun. Step over to the window. Stand there looking in. Someone might talk to me. Someone might. I beg your pardon. Do forgive me for startling you. <laughs> well, I'm not startled. Aren't you Jean Taylor from New York? Well, yes. Yes, I am. This is a coincidence. Sam Edwards, the name. I know you? Not exactly. I know your father. Oh. He often spoke to me of you. His favorite daughter, aren't you? Am I? <laughs> I get it. Sort of holds you down, doesn't he? You mean he tries to? <laughs> well, I can see he isn't very successful now, is he? Oh, I do all right. Alone? Certainly. Going someplace in particular? Why? Why not go places with me? Send to my father's. What'd you say? Uh, nothing. I wish you would say something. For instance, that you'd like to have me show you Paris. The real Paris. Real Paris? Of course. The Paris the tourists never get to see. The Paris you read about. A living, lusty Paris. You go with me? Oh, mister, I'd love it. Excellent, excellent. Shall we go? You really mean the, the real Paris? Pure and unadulterated. <laughs> and not so pure. Mister, you're the answer to a maiden's prayer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not much further. Kind of a funny street, isn't it? The real Paris. I hope. And here we are. Told you it wasn't much of a walk. You, you mean this house? That's right. The old Paris. It's old enough. Sure looks like a dive. If your father heard of this, oh. He won't. He won't. I should hope not. I thought you said this was a club. Oh, yes, indeed. I'll have our own key. Here you are, my dear. Fun a la carte. I'll take it a la mode. A la anything. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Edwards, where are you? Just closing the door. All right, this way, my dear. See, how about some lights? How about it? In here, plenty of lights. I thought you said they'd be a swing band. I don't hear anything. Well, not so impatient, all in good time. Step in here. It better be good. Uh, it will be. Say, there's nothing in here. What? Mr. Edwards, locking the door. Say, what's the idea? Seems like a good idea. I said, what's the idea? And I said, it seems like a good idea. You lied to me. I'm an opportunist. And if you think you can get away with anything, you're crazier than you look. Am I? You said you were a friend of my father's. I am. I am indeed a friend of his money. What? Money, money. You little sap, you don't think I'm interested in you? Don't you talk to me like that. <laughs> Still wet behind the ears. You let me out of here. Sit down, sit down. Let me out. Sit down. Yeah, that's the idea. After all, you're not talking to your dear papa now. I'm a fellow who likes his own way even more than you do. This will cost you plenty, mister. You mean it'll cost papa plenty? $150,000 plus interest. Let me out of here. $150,000 plus interest. Every dime he took from me, I'll get back. I don't know what you're talking about. Open that door and let me out of here. You think it was accidental, my meeting you? 
On the contrary, I planned every minute of it. I knew exactly what you've been doing ever since you stepped foot in Paris. Why shouldn't I know? I've been waiting for this. He took my money, that father of yours, and now he'll give it back. They, they know where I am. They'll find me. Ah, Winkle doesn't know where you are. You saw to that. You know... I just told you I made it my business to know. Yeah, he'll give me back my $150,000, that father of you yours. You can't keep me On here. the contrary. I can do nothing else. I waited two years for a chance like this. Yeah, two years. Because I knew sooner or later you'd be alone. You. The only way I could get him to give me back my money. Well, now I've got you. The whole 19th spoiled year. I'm not afraid. Why should I be? He's old. I'm smarter than he is. I'm not afraid of him. What's he talking about my father? $150,000. Father stole it from him. Maybe he did. What do I care? He can't keep me here. I gotta get out. I'm smarter than he is. Candlestick on table. Gotta get him to turn his back. That's it. Turn his back. Grab candlestick. Mr. Edwards, look. Behind you. Nothing at all except this. Candlestick. Why'd you... You open that door. Put down that candle. Don't come near me. Why, you little good for nothing. Give me that candlestick. What are you trying? What did I do? Hit him so hard. Candlestick heavy in my hand. Drop it. He's lying there so still. Maybe I... Something dark. Crawling along his head out on the floor. God, God, killed him, killed him. <laughs> Gotta get out of here. Which key is it? Which key? I can't find the right one. Which is it? I gotta get out of here. Blood pouring out of me. I'll go crazy. My head. I'm all mixed up. This is the door we came in. It is. But why won't the keys? I gotta get out of here. I killed a man. I gotta get out. Wind. Where? In the shadows. Another door. Open. I will get out. I will. Steps going down. So dark. Kill the man. Get away. Back to hotel. No one will know. Ever. Dark. I... I don't know. I... Water. Face and floor covered with water. Can't get out. Have to go up there. Find another way out. Go up there again. Must be another way out up there. The door. Shut. Wind blew it shut. I got out. I got to. Go down again. See if water's deep. Wade through water if it isn't deep. Only up to my ankle. I will get out. I will. Must be a basement door. So dark. Killed him. If they catch me. They won't catch me. Never. Nobody knows. That sound. Running water. Over this way. I wonder why. Get out of here. No one will know. Can't know. No one saw me come in. Sound of water so loud. I wonder what. I remember. Stepped out. Water over my head. Filthy water. Pulling me under. I hear it. Yet no water here. So dark. 
Where am I? Where? Got to get out of here. Got to get out. Stand up. Oh. Oh. Bump <laughs> my head. Don't move about her. Crawl. Crawl out of here. Kill the man. Gotta get out of here. Smash his head in. Gotta get out of here! But not that way, mademoiselle. <laughs> Another foot in that direction, and you would have fallen many feet into the water. Where are you? Beside you. I saved your life, mademoiselle. What? You floated by drowning. I saved you. You saved me? Oui, I did. In the dark, I saw you. Dark? What? Where am I? Where am I? You do not know. Where am I? Wet stone, smell, sound of water. You've got to tell me where I am. Oui. I tell you, mademoiselle, you are in one of the great sewers of Paris. This way. What's the matter with you? Do you have to walk so fast? But I walk slowly, mademoiselle. So dark. Haven't you even got one match? I see quite well, mademoiselle. If you will follow me. And then walk slower. You're just a shadowy something. Walk slower, I tell you. I am a busy man, mademoiselle. You fool, don't you understand? The quicker you get me out of here, the more I'll pay you. I'll give you more than you make in a year. The sewers run beneath the streets like fingers of outstretched hands. Some of these tunnels are so old that all the world has forgotten them. There's no water here. Oui. If that is true, abandon this one. How much further? A step, a milli a step. You said that half an hour ago. Turn here. Turn here, eh? Up the steps. A turn, and here we are. What are you talking about? It's still dark. We're still underground. We are here. What are you talking about? My workroom. Workroom? Who cares about your workroom? Out of here. You said you'd get me out of here. No, mademoiselle. I take you away from the water. Here. But I want to get out. Out with this decent air. Out where there's light. Do you hear me? You've got to get me out of here. Oh, no. No. Whoever meets her Louis down here stays here. You're crazy. No. You know what money is, don't you? Oui, mademoiselle. Then get it through that head of yours. I'll make you a rich man if you get me out of here. Rich. Rich. Just get me out of here. You are a noisy one. Crazy. You are. No. You are. What do you stay down here for if you aren't? I work. Work? What sort of work have you here? I make things. You will see. See? How can I see in this dark? Your eyes will accustom themselves in a few years. Get me out of here! Come. What? Come, mademoiselle. <laughs> Come. Wait for me. Wait for me. I will show you my work. Wait for me. If you'll get me out of here, I tell you, you'll never regret it. Where are you? I've lost you. Where are you? To your right, mes chérie. Turn to your right. My right? Oh, where are you, old man? Here, I'm here. But, but there's no light here. You didn't get me out. You didn't. My work. It is here. Who cares about your work? Get me out of here where there's light. 
Light? Oui. I will make light. I'm not afraid. I've never been afraid of the dark. I just want to see where I'm going, that's all. Hurry. Hurry up with the light. Oui. I bring you light. Miserable little kerosene lamp. Haven't you got anything stronger than that? My work. We oui. Now you will see my work. This way, mademoiselle. This way. You crazy old fool. Who cares about anything but getting out of here? Will you get it through your head? Money. I'll give you plenty of it. Just show me the way out of this place. Do you want me to go as crazy as you are? Here, my fairy. This is the place. My wonderful workshop. So quiet. Always quiet. No one to disturb or we. No, indeed. Give me that lantern. I'll get out of here myself. No. That is impossible. My work. You see it? See it? What's that? Take it, mademoiselle. Take it in your hands. I made it. <laughs> With my own hands, I made it. It's a necklace. Oui, a necklace, eh? Exquisite work. You see for yourself, it is exquisite. Okay, so it's exquisite. Now, will you get me out of here? I made it myself. All by myself. No one helped me by myself. You crazy old fool. Give me that lantern. No. You must see how I make my beautiful necklaces. Here. Over here, mademoiselle. Look. Listen, you give me that lantern or I'll... We. <gasps> oui. From these, I make it. Bones. Oui. Beautiful bones. They come floating down the water to me. Bones of... What? The foolish ones who kill themselves in the water. The sewer brings them to me. We, oui, all of them. Oh. The miserable, unhappy flesh. I take it off them. Then at last, they are bones. Hard, white, useful bones for my work. See, that one in the corner. Take off my arm. No. You must come to look, my sherry. You must. Let's go of my arm. Oh, mademoiselle, come. <laughs> you see, this skull, I have it almost clean. You stand there. I will show you how I do it. Eh? My saw. So, I cut the good, strong, white piece off the top and clean the brains away, eh? Watch me. <laughs> no. No. Get away. Gotta get away. Chase me. Old man. Can't run as fast as I can. Get away. Just get away, that's all. Sawing that skull. Dead man. I killed a man. Mademoiselle! Come after me. Get away. Oh, we'll get away. Nightmare. Gotta get out. So dark. I gotta get the light. I'll go crazy if I don't get the light. Water. Water again. Gotta be careful. Maybe if I yelled, someone would hear me. Workman. Someone in the sewer. If I yell. Help! Help me! Help me! Echo. Only the echo talking back to me. Oh, if only someone was here to get me out of here. Someone. I am here, mademoiselle. No. Why did you want to run away from me? It was quite useless. Let go of me. Let go. It is no use to struggle, my sister. Let go of me, you crazy fool. Let go of me. Do you hear? Take your hands off me. Let go of me. No. You come with me, mademoiselle. You eat with me if I have to drag you along. I need your help. I have wanted so very long. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. <laughs> no. You see, you cannot reach me, mademoiselle. I twist your arm so. Oh, 
Yeah. Now you will do as I say. Eh? You will come quietly. We, eh? oui, Chérie, you will help me too. Always help me. There is so much work to do. So many bones to be cut. <laughs> you are doing very well, mademoiselle. We oui, very well indeed. <laughs> stop! Stop! Pull. That is not the way to cut. Crosswise! Crosswise! Crosswise? If you cut the other way, the bones will split. Splinters are not good for my work. We. Oui. Now you will try it again, eh, ma chérie? <laughs> oh, that is right, eh? That one, ma chérie, has long bones, did he not? Eh? <laughs> I remember the day I fished him out of the water. Still alive he was. <laughs> but I fixed that. We, oh, oui, I fix it. <laughs> he must have been like you. Rich, willful, no good for anything or anybody in life. <laughs> but in death, who oh, he, now he will be useful, eh? Keep sawing! Keep sawing! There is so much work to do, my sherry. What was I saying? Ah, about the bones, we. Oh, look about, my sherry. Chains and chains of pretty necklaces. I made them all myself. All myself. Everyone. Like lacy strings they are. Eh? Oh, such beauty. We. Stop. Stop. Stop, I tell you. Ah, you hear it? You hear it? <laughs> I ask you, you did not hear it? Come quickly. We have work to do. Come. Oh, no. Must I drag you after me always? <laughs> ah, come, come. <laughs> ah, another one. Just in time to... Uh, quickly. Come quickly. Hurting me. Then come quickly. <laughs> yeah, your eyes can see in the dark now as well as mine. Eh? Uh, we, I train you. Louis train you well. Huh? Such a short time when you are doing so very well. Huh? You saw the bones into pieces almost as well as I do myself. Huh? Uh, my sherry, it is good to have the woman around. We'll make this place a fairy land of necklace. Huh? So many of them, they will be like clouds above us. Huh? Quickly, quickly, move more quickly. Don't hurt me. <laughs> yeah. oui. I must say you have changed quite nicely. So docile. Quiet tears now, where before you were so noisy. We, <laughs> oui. before you were another rich one, good for nothing but for trouble. Huh? Now you do my work for me. <laughs> that is the way it should be, my sherry. <laughs> Uh, here, here we are. The water runs quite strongly here, doesn't it? Eh? The largest sewer of them all to bring me more white ones for my work. <laughs> See, there he comes, another one. Oh, Mommy. Here we Mommy. Another one who tried to take his life. Eh? I always know when one is coming. Oh, mon Dieu, he's a big one. Eh? Strong bones he'll have. Get him. Help me lift him out. No. Help me lift me. I should be one. He's alive. He's alive. I see. Pull the chair under the water. Pull it under. Pull it under. I tell you. Hold his hair. Pull him under. Why did you lump in the water? The water is taking you away from me. And 
how he is the fishing, my friend. How could I fish, Levitis? <laughs> in my time, the Seine is full of fish. In your time? <laughs> Look, she was praying in. Where is that for a fish to live? I tell uh, you. Ma- Monsieur. Look, what? Uh, in the water. Voila, it's right a purpose. She's a woman. Yeah. The current will take her right by her. Hold on to my arm. I'll get you. I'll get you. Oh, oh, hold on. Oh, oh, not too far. Oh, you will fall in. A little more. A little more. I got you. Pull me back. Oui. Pull me back now. Oui. <laughs> Help me lift her up. Why? <laughs> So, yeah, another one, I suppose, who found life too bitter. We, poor old women, must have had a long, miserable life. The misery in her face, we, yeah, she looks as if she might be an American. She... What do? She, she, she moves her lips? We, we, old woman, what is it? Eh? What are you saying? What would you like? A beautiful necklace. Necklace? A beautiful necklace. Out of bones. Real human bones. Lights out, written especially for radio by Arch Obler, comes to you each Wednesday from our Chicago studios. This program has been heard in Canada over the facilities of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. This is the National Broadcasting Company. And that was Lights Out. Them Bones, her name was Jean. And the actress was a very young Mercedes Cambridge, who later on uh, performed in a lot of radio. She was almost dubbed the uh, queen of radio during her time in the 30s and 40s. And during an interview session a long time ago, I heard she was talking about how she first started in radio and she auditioned. She had to audition for her first radio show and the producer asked her, could she scream? So she let out such a loud scream and forceful scream that she broke a pearl necklace all over the floor. Mercedes Cambridge, an outstanding actress for old time radio. You're listening to MPIR Live, Episode 4, for August the 19th, 2020. And this is Clyde J. Gale, your host. I've got a reminder here. Mystery Play Internet Radio and these podcasts are listener-supported. So please take a few minutes and visit mpir-otr.com. That's mpir-otr.com. And on the left-hand side, the menu options, select uh, donation support. Please, a one-time donation via PayPal of any amount will be greatly appreciated. It will help me keep these shows coming to you. Okay, now coming up for the next episode from the series Lights Out. It is also one of my all-time favorites. And it is titled... Murder Castle, and it aired February 16th, 1938. So here on episode four of MPIR Live for August the 19th, 2020, Lights Out, Murder Castle. I tell you, Captain, it don't make sense. We picked her up walking down the street saying the same thing over and over again. Well, she's as goofy as they come, I tell you. Listen to her yourself. Revenge, 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 revenge. revenge. Yeah, listen to her, Captain. Revenge. Over and over again. Revenge. Such a young and pretty girl. Revenge. Revenge. What could have driven her out of her mind like revenge. that, I ask you? Revenge, 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 revenge. Hey, 
Yes? Yes, what is it? I... I'm looking for a Mr. Henry Stewart, if you please. Oh, oh, you mean about the advertisement? Yes, that's right. I got here as soon as I could. That's all right, that's all right, as long as you got here. That's all that matters. Come in, come in. Oh, thank you. Uh, just uh, put your suitcase down there. It'll be all right. Thank you. Oh. Now, if you'll come right this way. Thank you. Just step in here, Miss... Uh... Malone. Ella Malone. Oh, yes, of course. Miss Malone. Now, then, you'll have a chair, please. Oh, thank you. Ah, there we are. Now, then, Miss Malone, uh, to be perfectly frank with you, I wasn't quite expecting you today. Oh, I'm truly sorry, Mr. Stewart. But, you see, I, I took the wrong train and I... Well, I had the hardest time finding the house. <laughs> I do hope you'll forgive oh, of me. Of course, of course. Don't give it another thought. Promptness may be a virtue, but we all can't be virtuous, now can we? <laughs> now then, uh, you're here in answer to my advertisement. Yes, sir, you wrote me. Oh, yes, yes, of course. You're the young lady from... Uh... Uh, from Queensville. Oh, yes, Queensville. Uh, you uh, have my letter with you? Oh, yes, sir. Right here, sir. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now then, uh, your friends know you came here, of course. There's no one very much interested, Mr. Stewart. Oh, 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 come now. A pretty young girl like you, no young bows, and so on, so on. No, sir, there's no one. I mean, sir, you can depend on me to give all my attention to my work. Very commendable, very commendable indeed. My work, as I wrote you, is entirely confidential. My philanthropies are, to a great extent, entirely sub rosa. No fuss, no feathers. You understand what I mean? Oh, yes, sir. As my secretary, my affairs will be entirely in your hands. My checking account, my finances, and so on, so on. Entirely in your care. I understand, sir. It's uh, quite a responsibility, and uh, you're quite a young woman. And as I wrote you, the bank... Oh, oh yes, sir, I understand. Uh, the bond, I brought the money for it, $300. Uh -huh. I've got it right here, sir. Oh, fine, fine. That's very businesslike, yes, indeed. Uh, I'll give you a receipt, and there we'll be. Uh, Mr. Stewart. Yes? Oh, my pen. Oh, oh yes, I mean, here we are. Uh, my money. Uh, will I get it back from the bank any time I leave your employ... I mean, when you want me to? Hmm? Oh, uh, yes, of course, of course. Uh, now then, here we are. Received of Miss Nellie Malone. Ella. Oh, yes, of course, Ella. Memory isn't quite what it used to be. <laughs> That's why I need a good secretary. I'm very good at remembering things. Oh, you are, you are. Now then, uh, we are. Guess this receipt is in good order. Received of Miss Ella Malone. $300 to be deposited with the Merchants Bank as surety bond. And to be returned to said Ella Malone upon request. There's my signature. How then, how's that? I'm sure that'll do very well, sir. <laughs> now uh, then... Uh, <clears throat> You have got my receipt, but I... Uh... Oh, oh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> not at all, not at all. Oh, of course, I have it right here. I am sorry. Oh, well, I understand the excitement of your trip. Here it is, Mr. Stewart. You see, I had it already in an envelope. Now, if you're open... Oh, no, no, not at all, not at all. Ben can do that when I send it to them in the morning. Now, uh, just put your purse down there, and I'll show you to your new home. Yes, Mr. Stewart. Now, we'll go right up these stairs. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, you find I have quite a place here. Three stories high, and every inch of it my own design. Rather dark. Oh, oh careful now, careful. Oh, I'm all right. <laughs> Mustn't hurt yourself. Hardly the way to start a new job, now, is it? Oh, now then, here we are. Got a nice room for you, very nice. Fact of the matter is, you can choose any room on this floor. But, Mr. Stewart, your daughters. Daughters? Yes, won't they object? You said Ella. Oh, yes, yes, my daughters. I did write you about them, didn't I? Yes, you did. Uh, well, never mind about them. They're upstairs studying. Now, right here. I suggest that you take this room, at least for the night. Whatever you say, Mr. Stewart. Uh, get the light on you. There we are. Nice, isn't it? Uh, I've never had such a large room. If you've got one a little smaller... On the contrary, my dear Miss Malone, you'll find this one small enough. Perhaps a little too small. <laughs> yes, indeed. Entirely too small. But, Mr. Stewart... Locking the door. M Mr. Stewart, why did you... Mr. Stewart, why did you lock the door? Mr. Stewart! Mr. Stewart, why have you shut me in here? 
Mr. Stewart, please. Please answer me. Mr. Stewart, please let me out of here. Mr. Stewart, please let me out of here. It's getting dark in here. Please. Mr. Stewart, let me out. Yes. Yes, Miss Knoll. There's no doubt in my mind at all that you're the very person I want to employ as my housekeeper. I'm very glad to hear that, Mr. Stewart. Of course, the matter of being housekeeper of a place as large as mine calls for definite qualities, you understand, of course. I always do my best, sir. Well, one certainly can't ask for more than that, no, indeed. Your wife, maybe she'd like to talk to me. My wife? Oh, yes, of course. I wrote you about my wife, didn't I? Yes, sir. Uh, well, my wife is out shopping. As soon as she returns, you will meet her. I'm sure she'll find your recommendations as satisfactory as I did. Makes me very happy. I've always wanted to work in a fine house. Uh, now, uh, about money. Oh, any salary you want to pay me, Mr. Stewart, it's, it's all right. I just want a chance to show you how good I can do your work. Very commendable, yes, indeed, very commendable. But uh, we must agree on a salary. I'm the sort of man who has respect for money and expects a similar respect in others. Oh, yes, and speaking of money, you'll be wanting to open a new bank account, I suppose. Bank account? Yes, it's my principle that everyone employed by me should have a savings account. Bill's character. I'll open an account for you in the morning. You can transfer any other bank accounts you have back in your hometown up to my bank. Convenience, you know. Oh, no, sir. I haven't got that. Hmm? I haven't any money in the bank back home. I, I took it all out. Oh, oh. It wasn't much anywhere. What was left of father's insurance money after my mother died. Oh, yes, yes. Um, well, now then, supposing you leave all your things here and uh, we'll go look over the house. Hmm? That'll be very nice. Hmm. Yeah, uh, right through this door. I'd be glad to be working in such a big house. Right this way. Oh, yes, yes, quite an establishment here. Designed it all myself. I work hard, Mr. Stewart. Oh, yes, yes, I'm certain you will. Now then, I down these stairs. I'll uh, show you everything downstairs first. You have a washing machine? Huh? Oh, yes, 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 everything modern, everything convenient. High, wide basement. There you are. Now, watch yourself. It's uh, just a little dark down here this time of day. Oh, it is a big basement, all right. But hang up plenty of washing down here. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Now, if you'll just come this way. You, you building something down here? Building? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Always building, always changing, always remodeling. Change, 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 change. My hobby, always changing things. <laughs> Hard to keep clean. Now, now, don't you worry about that. Everything will be cleaned up in short order. Bags of sand, concrete, concrete mixer, everything will be out of the way, won't bother you at all. No, not at all. <laughs> now, right this way. You, you're making more room? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. With nice, clean, concrete floors. Here, look at this one. It's kind of dark. Oh, come on, come on, get closer. All my own work. You see, the floor is still wet. <laughs> I like concrete, don't you? Yes, it's... It is clean. Yes. Covers everything. You know how deep that concrete is? Three feet deep. Yes, ma'am. Three feet deep. And I just poured it an hour before you honored me with your presence. Three feet. That'll make a mighty thick slab of stone, won't it, Miss Nord? Thick enough to cover... You! Ah. Ah. Yes, indeed. A fist at the point of the jaw still a most effective soporific. Uh, well, you're quite a light woman, my dear Miss Nord. Up you go, and in you go. Face down. What an unusual bed you lie in, Miss Nord. Sinking down and down and down. And the concrete will harden. And I... Uh, I guess I will have to get myself a new housekeeper. gentlemen. Let's lean back now and relax for a moment. Let's take time out from tonight's amazing lights out story. The story of a strange, mysterious mansion and the one woman who entered those doors and was never seen alive again. Let's turn during this brief intermission to a much more everyday situation and a question that's much easier to answer. An angry girl is storming out of her friend's house. And her friend says, What can be wrong with Lucy these days? 
cross as a bear, and she's losing so much weight, she looks terrible. She's just no fun anymore. Well, you know what that well-known nutrition authority says about how improper eating due to wartime living may cause a person to become deficient in vitamin B1 and iron, and how you absolutely need enough of them to keep your right weight and energy. Well, I come to think of it, that was Ruth's trouble when she got so run down. So she took ironized yeast tablets. And you know how grand she looks and feels again now. Yes, friends, any number of people who, due to vitamin B1 and iron shortage, were losing weight, losing strength and energy and interest in life, tell how ironized yeast tablets help them regain glorious pep and strength and needed pounds. So if you're short vitamin B1 and iron, don't wait. Go to your druggist this very night and say, A bottle of ironized yeast tablets, please. And now back to our Lights Out story of Murder Castle. Hello? Hello? Hello, is this the employment agency? This is Mr. Stewart. Mr. Henry Stewart. I'm interested in employing a nurse for my child. Oh, uh, someone preferably unattached who can live here with my wife and myself. No, 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 just send me their names, addresses, and references, and so on. Uh, I'll send you a check for the services. My address is 424 East 7th. Yes, that's right, just their names and addresses. Yes, yes, I'll send you a check. Yes. Oh, goodbye. Oh, yes, yes, I'll be there, I'll be there, I'll be there. Yes, yes, what is it? Is, is Mr. Stewart in? Oh, yes, 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 indeed. Won't you come in? I'm Mr. Stewart. Thank you. Uh, you're answering in regard to... Uh... Mr. Terrier position. You wrote me a letter. Oh, yes, 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 indeed. Uh, won't you step in here, please? Thank you. Now, you sit there, I'll sit here. We'll get better acquainted. Put your suitcase down there in place, George. So now then, I'm afraid I didn't quite get your name. Ray. Betty Ray. You wrote me. Oh, yes, of course. I remember you distinctly. Uh, now then, you have my letter to you just to sort of refresh my memory on the circumstances, don't you know? Oh. Well, I'm sorry. Eh? I didn't bring it with me. Oh. Well, then, suppose you tell me a little more about yourself uh, and all that's happened. But then, Father, see you off the train, I suppose. Oh, no, sir. It's, it's the way I wrote you, Mr. Stewart. I... I'm quite alone. Oh, yes. Well, but uh, first there's the matter of the surety bond. I wrote to you about that, didn't I? Yes. Yes, you did. Ah, yes, I felt quite certain of that. Mr. Stewart, I was wondering... Yes? Have you had many secretaries? Why do you ask that? I want to know. Why do you ask that question? And what happens to them after you hire them? Tell me, what happens to them? Young woman, just who are you? My name is Betty Malone. Malone. Betty Malone. My sister Ella came here a month ago about a job. And I want to know where she is. Do you hear me? I want to know where she is. I, I don't think I quite know what you're talking about. Why do you lie to me? Why do you lie to me? She was here. She was. Oh, then what makes you so sure? A letter you wrote her. The first one. I waited a whole month and then I came here. And as soon as I saw you, I thought something was wrong. And now I know there is. My sister Ella, where is she? You've got to tell me. What if I tell you again that I... Don't know what you're talking about. I I'll go to the police. They'll make you tell the truth. I know she came here. I know she did. <laughs> Why do you laugh? Why? Because you're being a very foolish young lady. Very foolish indeed. There's no need to get excited. <laughs> of course your sister's here. And very happy, too. She She's here? Yes, yes. And very happy, too. So then take me to her. Please take me to all her. All right, all right. No need to get excited. Of course, I'll take you to her. I intended to all along. I was just having a little joke with you. <laughs> is she all right? Is she of course, all right? Of course, of course. Now then, come right along with me. Come right along with me. Along with me. Yes, yes, she's right up here. Been with me for over a month. Why didn't she write? Why didn't she tell me? Now then, right down this hall, and you can ask her that for yourself. This this isn't a trick, is it? My dear young lady, <laughs> you have easily the most suspicious mind of anyone I've ever met. 
Why, I'm quite a helpless old man, and you always have recourse, as you put it, to the police. <laughs> Here we are, right in this room. Well, go right in. All right. Well, it's locked. Well, knock on the door and she'll open it for you. Ella? Ella, it's Betty. Let me in, darling, it's Betty. What do you know? Must be sleeping. Ella, please. It's Betty, your sister Betty. Well, now, she certainly is a tight sleeper. But she can't be sleeping. Open the door. Please open the door. All right, all right. No reason to get excited. Oh, quickly, open the door quickly. Now, now, don't excite yourself needlessly. Well, I'll go ahead. You open the door. Ella, it's Betty. Ella, what? Now then, my dear Betty, we understand each other clearly, don't we? Ella. Dead. Nothing like a complete understanding now, is there? Ella. Dead. Oh, it wasn't so difficult. I shut the door, sealed it, and nature took care of the rest. Ella. Dead. She died quite easily. Much easier than others. Why? You mean, why do I do it? It's a very simple explanation, young woman. This is my business. Yes, yes, my business. Some men make their fortunes in stocks, some bonds, some in business. And this is my business. Why? 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 Why is any business conducted? Profit, my dear. And I've made quite a neat little profit, oh, yes. And a very safe one, too. You are dead. Yes, and you're the very first to come wandering about looking for one of my uh, customers. The first. And I assure you, the last. Oh, yes. Thirty women have come in my front door. Ella. Thirty-one, including you and Ella. Uh, come on along. No. And I'll tell you all about them. You'll find it most instructive. Yes, indeed. Now, come. Don't, don't hold my arm. Oh, but I must. He's collared as they twist and turn. Oh, yes, it's best I hold your arm. Get lost easily around this house. <laughs> my most interesting house. Where are you taking me? Ah, yes, there were thirty before you. Most interesting array. I used to read the want ads in small town papers, and then I'd write letters. Oh, most interesting letters. I needed a secretary, a housekeeper, a nurse, excellent salary, unusual accommodation. Oh, how well, I knew this had happened. Yes, indeed. And they brought all their worldly belongings with them, generally in a suitcase. A little here, a little there. Oh, why sure it's been most profitable. Now, in this room, for example... No. No, don't open that door. No, perhaps it would be better not to. The one in here came to be my housekeeper. Oh, let me see. How long ago was it? Oh, well, no matter. She came as a housekeeper, and after she went into a uh, retirement in that room, I found in her suitcase such interesting bonds. Why, I tell you, my eyes fairly popped right in my head. Oh, yes. It's the uncertainty that makes my little business so very fascinating. Kill 30 women. Now, let's go down the way now, down here. Don't make me pull you along. Kill 30 women. It wasn't difficult. Most women are such fools, anxious to believe what they want to believe. They came here for life, and you gave them death. Ah, you're the smart one. That's why I'm even bothering showing you my work. I never did the others. And showing you around won't do harm. You won't be talking long. 30 women died. Now, in this room... Oh, uh, let me open it and show you. No. No, don't make me look. No, please don't. No. Oh, you see? There's no reason for excitement, just an empty room. Uh, that's what she thought when she went in here. Then I pressed this button, so. <laughs> and the floor flopped open as she stood on it, and down she went. Down, down, down. Guess into what? A pit of lime. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes, I tried out so many different ways of killing them. You wonder why they'll never find me out? Well, I'll tell you why. Because I'm much too smart for all of them. Oh, not perfect crimes. No, nothing infantile, but just cleverness in choosing the women I do my business with and an equal cleverness in doing away with them. Oh, yes, indeed. Now then, what was I telling you? Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Why, they'll never get me. Ella, seeing you, it's done things in my head. No corpus delicti. And if there is one, no evidence of violence. Ah, there, that's the secret. Are you very frightened, sister? Well, of quick lime, there's no corpus delecti to that, I can tell you. <laughs> Not when you bury them in a slab of concrete. Ah, it, that's the secret. I could only have been with you, little sister. And now, this room, let me show it to you. I, I think this will be your room, my dear. You're very frightened. You see the door? Airtight. Airtight, yes, indeed. I'll open it. <laughs> the room. Amazing sight, isn't it? No doors, no windows. I could have helped you, Ella. Now, I'll shut you up inside the room, and then I'll close the door and press this button here like this. You 
hear that, little one? Do you hear that? Pumping, pumping, pumping. And guess what is pumping? Go let go of my hair. Air. You hear me? Pumping the air out of the room. Yes, that's clever, isn't it? <laughs> you breathe, and soon there'll be nothing there to breathe, and then you'll die. And if the police do find your body, no mark of violence, nothing but asphyxiation. A most mysterious death, they'll say. In time, they'll decide it's all quite natural, embolism, heart attack. Oh, they'll think up a fancy name to clear their files. Yes, indeed, they always do. It isn't right for him to live with it, Now, first, off with the pump. Now, my dear, I think you'd better step inside quickly now so I can close the door and go about my other work. Quickly, I tell you. No, wait. Wait, wait for what? I want to give you something. What? You give me that doesn't belong to me already. Chris. Gun. Get in there. Get in that room. Gun. You had a gun in your purse all the time. My father. I brought it for the man who... Ella. Get in there. No, 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 no. What are you going Get in there. I'll press the trigger. Get in there, I'll kill you. No, no, don't. Get you. Don't. Get I'm an old harmless man. Get I was only fooling. I wouldn't hurt you for the Get world. Oh. Revenge. Oh. Try to revenge, isn't it, Ella? Oh. He said to press this button, Ella. Oh. The pump. Oh. It's running, Ella. Oh. Listen to it. It's killing him the way he killed you. It's right to revenge, isn't it, little sister? Right to revenge. 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 The air is going out. The air. Shut off that motor out there. You hear me? Shut off that motor. Pumping out the air. Pumping it out. The pipe. The air going out. I can't reach the pipe. Shut it off, you devil out there. Shut it off. It'll kill me. Kill me. It's getting sick already. Shut it off. I'll give you anything, anything you want. Shut off that broom. I can't die. I won't die. I'll tear the walls down. Let me out of here. Air. Man's got the web here. Let me out. Let me out. Well, my ear. And the ear. Comes breaking. Blood in my mouth. My eyes. No air. Breathing. Air. Give me air. Breath of air. Revenge, 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 Czarist Russia. Uh, you mean right now, Mr. Oblin? Oh, yeah. You know the answer to that as well as I do, Frank. It's always after you've had your say for iron eyes yeast. Remember, friends, if you're deficient in vitamin B1 and iron, if that's why you're so under par in weight and strength and energy, then get iron eyes yeast tablets right away. Now, of course, a rundown condition may be due to other causes. If in doubt, see your doctor. But if you're simply short vitamin B1 and iron, remember, ironized yeast has been so successful in such cases that it's sold on this no-risk, money-back basis. If you don't begin to eat better, to look and feel much stronger, peppier, and more alive, the cost of the first bottle will be refunded to you in full by ironized yeast, Box IY, Rahway, New Jersey. Now, uh, what is this about Sakhalin? Isn't that the Russian island up above Japan? Yes, but 
Our story concerns itself only about the Sakhalin or Sakhalin, which was used as an ed- an execution ground and a, well, it was a sort of a macabre education ground and a devil's island against the enemies of the Tsar. It's a strange story of man's inhumanity to man in one of the strangest places this world has ever known. But be with us again as usual next week. Well, we have been listening to Lights Out, Murder Castle, originally aired February 16th, 1938. And this is MPIR Live, Episode 4 for August the 19th, 2020. And my name is Clyde J. Kale. And I really hope you find these programs entertaining and enjoyable as much as I do. It is a true pleasure and passion for me. And I am very grateful that you invite me into your listening ear, your living room, or wherever and however you listen to these podcasts. Please give me a a star rating. Give me a thumbs up. Comments. However, I appreciate the love. And thank you so much for listening to MPIR Live and Mystery Play Internet Radio. Okay, I'm going to say good night. And as always, you know, science says that there these radio shows, that the thousands and thousands of hours of programming is out there in the air. They never go away. So with that, you just have to know where to tune them in to listen to the shows. So let's let the voices of the old time radio have the last word good night everybody and thanks for listening and now the time has come to lend thine ears to au revoir pleasant dreams au revoir pleasant dreams think about it when requesting the theme until next tuesday when Possibly you all may tune in again. Keep the old maestro always in you. Yes, sir. Au revoir. This is Ben Bernie, ladies and gentlemen, and all the lads. Wishing you a bit of pleasant dream. I love to spend each Thursday with you. As friends of friends. I'm sorry it's through, I'm telling you just how I feel. I hope you feel that way too. Good night, everybody. Thanks, the memory, to each and every guy who helped our planes to fly. Each one of you a victory crew that kept our flag on high. And thank you so much. A thanks to all you men for a swell time here tonight. We're in a hurry, so good night. Thanks very much. Thanks for listening, and good night. Now. Gotta run down to the newsstand, Molly. Be right back. What's all the hurry? Dinner's almost ready. I gotta get a magazine. Somebody told me there's an article about us in this issue. Out today. Hey, you got any change? No, I haven't. Oh, never mind. I'll charge it as usual. The newsstand guy don't like it, but he does it. What me. magazine has our pictures in it? Look magazine. Hey, why don't you come with me? While he gives me a dirty look, you can grab a clean one. <laughs> don't you get it, Molly? It ain't funny, McGee. It ain't? Well, it's hard to hold that terrific pace right up to the end. <laughs> Good night, all. Good night, good night, good night. It's time to say good night. Good night, good night, good night. What more is there to say but good night? We've had a few laps, and it's time for two to loop. Up we go. We the same and it could think could do. Good night, good night, good night, good night, good night.
And good night, Mrs. Calabash, wherever you are.